So what are you guys? We are the Sparkwood family. Think about normal distribution. Okay. Okay, so what is there to know about the normal distribution? One, it's very pretty. The mean, median, and mode, they're all in the same place. It's symmetric, so the mean, medium, mode are the same. Number two, it's symmetric. Which kind of conveys the same information in some sense, almost, not quite. And then number three, they always say this, but you're never going to use this, it's asymptotic. Meaning, it just goes up to infinity at the ends. But the ends are so small, it doesn't really do anything for you. The way to think of this in terms of probability or chance is literally, if you set the entire area to be one, and you get a score here, well, let's say this. Do you agree getting this number on up, that's half of the area of the entire thing? So the probability of that would be 50%. Okay. Okay. What are things you should know about this? You should know the, this rule. Um, what's special about this, the normal distribution? One is its shape. So based on its shape, you'll always have on this guy a mean right in the middle. You will always measure things by standard deviations. Okay. And it turns out that if you are one standard deviation above or below the mean, you capture always with this shape 68% of the population. And if you're two standard deviations above or below the mean, so another sigma, you capture always 95%. And if you capture three standard deviations, which is weird and way out there, you always capture 99.7. They claim you should know that. If you're doing stats, definitely they like for you to know that. I don't know why, but people actually use the mnemonic, the numbers. But then that's not a mnemonic. They call it the 68, 95, 99.7% rule. Mm. What sort of mnemonic is that? You're actually just saying what the numbers are. Okay. Is everybody okay with this? Okay. You also know it's symmetric. Okay. We should talk about the idea of a z-score, but even though we talk about it, they're basically never really going to use it on the exam because you need a table to really use it. Okay. And that is, do you agree that you know everything if you know the number of standard deviations? So instead of talking about, let's say, let's say this. Let's say the average is 100. And let's say they tell you the standard deviation is 15. And let's say you want to look at a score like 130. And you want to know the percentage of people that are like 130 pounds of gummy bears per day or less. And the average person eats 100 pounds of gummy bears per day. Okay? And the standard deviation is 15. Okay? Because everything can be done in terms of standard deviations percentage-wise, what you do is you translate the numbers into standard deviations. So how many standard deviations is 100 from the mean? It's, it is the mean. It is the mean, so it's zero. But that would be your score, 100, minus the mean, divided by the number of points in a standard deviation. But does everybody agree? That's definitely zero. What about 130? So you do, you can eyeball those two, right? But it's literally your score minus the mean. That means you're 30 points away from the mean, right? But each standard deviation is worth what? 15. So you need to divide it by 15, and that would get you two. So it's telling you two standard deviations above the mean. Does everybody agree? Right? If, he, if this is 30 points and each standard deviation is worth 15, then that means there are, you are two standard deviations above the mean. Okay? This is what you call the z-score. So just tell me conceptually, what does the z-score 1.4 mean? You are 1.4... Standard deviations over the mean. Bingo. What if it's negative 3.99999? You are 3.99999 standard deviations below, below the mean. This is two standard deviations, right? Mm -hmm. But you know if you go out two standard deviations, what do you capture? 90%. 95%. But then what's the easy way to do this? Because you get 95, you go here and here, that would be 95%, but you want here on down, right? So maybe a strategy would be, if this portion here, and this portion here is 95%, why don't I just get half of it? So half of 95 would be 47.5? 
Do you guys agree? So 47.5 would be what? This portion here, which is what you want, right? But then why did I do that? Why didn't I just do the whole 95? Because remember you get this little tail end here? And that's hard to compute. So I'd rather just do this and then tack on this entire thing, which is easy. What is that entire thing? 50%. So you would get what? 97.5. So I think personally that you should be able to compute stuff like that. It's not their style to be super computational, but this is definitely doable without a table. Anything subtle like 1.5, 1.6, 1. 1. Uh, 2.3, there's no way unless you have a table. Okay, so everybody okay with this? So let me give you a high difficulty question with this. You have a normally distributed curve. By the way, does anybody know why they care about normal distribution? Because you can do stuff with like the z-score and stuff? Mm. But why not other distributions? Why this one? Bimodal? Like a Bimodal will be... Mm. It turns out that if I take... If my original distribution looked like this... Pretend that's my original distribution. It doesn't matter what the shape is. If I start taking samples of you guys and averaging the samples and looking at the distribution of the samples, even from this sucker, it ends up being normal distribution. It ends up being a normal distribution. Okay? Um, so as long as you, the samples are big enough. So once the samples are like size 30 plus, the distribution of the samples will always look normal. Okay, that's the central limit theorem. We don't need that, but that's why they care about this stupid thing. Okay, anyway. So what's a hard problem to do here? You have a normal distribution, and you're looking at, um, let's do column A, and then column B. So column A, so um, what's the information they give you? Let's say a 60th percentile is the score 600. 80th percentile is the score 800. The 70th, uh, so 700. 70th percentile. The worst it would get. It's not that bad, but it is annoying because somewhat conceptual. And you've got to remember, um, there's no way. There's no way in hell like you're supposed to like be able to look this up in the table. You don't have a table. So what do you think? Well, they're not going to draw the picture of the curve for you. But I think you should put in what you know. Somewhere, this is the 50th percentile. So somewhere over here, there's the 60th percentile. And that score, the score that which 60% of the population has a score less, it's got to be what? Was it 600? Mm -hmm. Okay. And then somewhere over here, there's the 80th percentile, which is what? 800. Okay. And what's special about 700? They didn't just do that randomly. That is the middle. The score literally in the middle of the two. Okay. So... What do you think about that relative to the 70th percentile? Well, do you agree that this must be 60%? So from here on down is 60% of the population. That's what it means to be the 60th percentile. And then from here on down is what? 80% of the population. So the 70th percentile is a score at which, when you look at that guy on down, you should capture what? 70%. But the percentage is represented in this picture by area. I think that's all you need to do this, even though this is high difficulty. And I don't think there's any computation, real computation involved. Maybe I shouldn't say high difficulty. That might stress you out. Let's say it's not high difficulty. You know, meaning I know from experience a lot of people get stressed by problems like this, but what do you think? Well, 700 seems to be a number right in the middle, right? Okay, pick that guy. Let's figure out his percentile. If this guy is 700, right in the middle, right? And this is 60 on down, and that's 80 on down, right? Then what you really get is this area, right here, versus what? This area. All those areas the same? No, which area is bigger? The one on the left is bigger. Somebody agree? So if this were the 70th percentile, then the, the percentage to the right and the percentage to the left should be 10% to the left and 10% to the right. They should be equal. But they're not equal. Somebody see that? 
do you agree you get more of that, a greater percentage on the left than you do the right? So that means this cannot be, 700 cannot be the 70th percentile. It must be what? Greater. Because you're capturing a greater percentage here. If you divided the percentages up 50-50, then it would be 70th percentile. 10% 10, 10 down to 60, 10% up to 80. But since you're getting more than 10% at this number, right? This number must be greater than the 70th percentile. So believe it or not, 700 wins. You can actually answer this problem. Okay. So what does it take to do this problem? Well, you know the basic shape of the normal curve. You know it slopes down. So you know if you pick the number in the middle, which is 700, and you know the percentage probability is represented by what? Shaded area. You know the area sh between 60 and s between 600 and 700. That area is greater than the area between 700 and 800. But if you really had the 60th percentile here, some curve, and you had the 80th percentile here, like that, and you had the 70th percentile, what that really means is wherever the 70th percentile is, let's say right there, that the area to the left, because that should represent 10%, would be equal to what? The area to the right, which should also be what? 10%. But since on this picture it's clear, if you're right smack in the middle, this guy is more area than that guy, that means you're beyond that 10%. Mm -hmm. so, this is, so you're actually above the 70th percentile, Maybe like the 72nd or the 75th, who knows. But you are beyond the 70th percentile. Everybody agree? So column B is a 70th percentile. Column A is 700. 700 is greater than that percentile. People look stressed or they look quiet. I would deem it to be high difficulty because I think under pressure, a lot of people are not going to compute this. They're going to freeze, and then that's it. But if you're comfortable with this idea, then it's like, oh, I get it. 70th percentile? Sure. So what you want to do is literally the 60th percentile means wherever you are, this on down is 60%. And the 80th percentile, let's, make it, let's give it lots of room. Let's redraw this. So 60th percentile means this score on down. Let's just draw some random picture. All of this shaded is 60%. But the 80th percentile means all of this on down is 80%, right? Does everybody agree? So what does it mean to be the 70th percentile? Well, if you're the 70th percentile, that, what's the difference percentage-wise between the 60th and 70th percentile? How much of the population do you capture? 10%. So this should represent somewhere in here 10% of the population. But then what's the difference between this and this? The same. So this should also capture what? 10% of the population. Does everybody see that? But these areas then, which represent the percentages, must be what? The same. Does everybody see that? Now, you can kind of believe it here. Because even though this one's higher, let's make it skinnier. And this one's lower, but it's wider. So these probably really could be 10% and 10%. Okay. But what I did as a trick was I picked this number, say 600. And I picked this number, 800. And if you literally just pick the number in the middle, that would be 700, right? But the number in the middle looks like this. In fact, that deserves color. This number here, which is right smack here, 700, right? But if you just look at the number right in the middle, don't you agree the widths are exactly the same? I'm not talking percentage-wise. I'm talking physically. The widths are the same, right? But this guy is higher, and this guy's what? Lower, so which area is definitely greater? The one on the left. The one here, because it's higher, right? Because you know the area is what? Base times height. This is going to beat this guy every single time. Okay? So what does that mean? That means this area is greater than ha the halfway point would have been 10%, 10%. But there's more over here than over there, but it's got to add up to 20%. So if you have 20% and you have more of it on the left-hand side, that's got to be more than half of 20%, more than 10%. So just make up a number more than 10%, say 11%. How did you decide that 700 was like above the 70th percentile? Oh, we figured that out from this logic. So see, so you go back. So if this is the... I get it, I'm just like, if I was throwing something else, like what I get it, like what I also apply that. So if you have this, right, and I'm giving you 700, do you agree the gap here is exactly the same? 
So if I'm computing the areas here, let's just compute. Forget what the answer is. I want to compute that area. That's going to be a base of 100 times a height of whatever this is. Yeah. Different heights, but whatever. But if I want to compute this area, what do you do? It's a base of 100 times what? Lower heights. Like if you match them up, this is lower, this is lower. They're all lower. So do you agree that area A is greater than area B? But area A plus area B is equal to what? 20%. Right? And since A is bigger than B, A is bigger than half of 20%. Does everybody agree? So A, so A is greater than 10%. But if it were 10%, you'd be at the 70th percentile. So if you're greater than 10%, you're greater than the 70th percentile. So the easiest way to see this is don't do the math formally, because the formal math doesn't look that nice. It looks like this. But what you're really saying is if A is greater than B, then A is greater than the halfway mark. Because if A were equal to B, do you agree? Then A would be what? 0.10. But A is greater than B, so A is greater than 0.10. And if this area is greater than 10, if this is 60% and this is bigger than 10%, then the number here is bigger than 70%. Okay? Even though I don't think, I think a lot of people would struggle with this, especially under pressure, technically you don't need a table for this, you don't need anything for that, except the concept of what percentiles mean and the fact that this guy's curving down, but you know that. You know a normal distribution is going to look something like that. Okay. Okay. Everybody okay with this? This would be... That was weird intonation. If you, it should be if you're doing the problem, Melissa. Not if you're doing the problem, Melissa. It's kind of weird, but whatever. <laughs> All good. Okay, so um, are we okay with this? Yeah. Questions on this or no?